Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Cabot. Sweet. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, we finally get to talk about rally cars again. I haven't normally. I like preface like rally cars are coming because so much of our stuff is like Jeeps, Overland, off Land Cruiser, Toyota stuff. But like, no, it's rally cars again tonight. So uh, as always, we're socially distant. It's the only way we can do the podcast. Ross and I still haven't been in the same physical space, which is hilarious to people. Uh, I'm in the Midwest, Ross in the Northeast, and Cabot's in Nevada. So like, we're back out. We're we're a cross country podcast. Is really how we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is it most of the time. So uh, tonight's news is that Land Rover did something silly for James Bond stuff. I don't think it's silly. I mean, you could have conversations up and down about uh, about the movie tie in things, you know, especially with like bullet cars. But Land Rover actually put their money where their mouth is with the uh, with the James Bond tie ins and built a Defender uh, two door D90 rally car. Um, and Mark Higgins of rally fame is going to drive it. So it was built with Bowler, who was okay. famous for building the Bowler Wildcat, which is the one everybody knew. But they still they still build things that aren't the Wildcat. And this is that. Um, it's, it's effectively a Wildcat-ified D90. It looks like a freaking riot. Um, you know, huge, huge, huge rally mud flaps and, uh, and a cage. And what else do you need? So... It's in celebration of the anniversary of James Bond, 60th anniversary of James Bond. So, you know, it's got the logo on the side and a big old 60. Um, interestingly, it's the two liter turbocharged four cylinder. Like this kind of seems like it would be the perfect opportunity for the 550 horsepower supercharged V8. But, you know, I don't know if fuel consumption is an issue in whatever rally series this thing's going to compete in um i don't know it looks awesome yeah that thing is crazy so is it going to be available to the public or is that like a special special like one-off kind of vehicle Mm, it doesn't say if i had to guess oh no built a one-off defender 90 so there's your answer (laughs) yeah fair enough yeah i know (laughs) i'm sure if you have like to rip that yeah Yeah. if you have enough money i'm sure bowler would be happy to build you one no or so would a certain somebody whose facility is not too far from me. Oh, is it? Wait, are you talking about like AI designs or whatever? Or are we talking no, about Clickham House? It starts. Yeah, it's Clickham okay, House. Okay, Clickham. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, why are we beating around the bush here? Yeah, I was like yeah, this is a no, hard test. Jimmy G, you, I'm sure he built uh, something akin to this. But yeah. yeah, cool thing, cool thing. Oh, right on. I bet he'd wrap a boot with a Land Rover Defender. So. That's the only real news that's happened since the last time we recorded because that Got was last else. night. So, but you oh, okay. you have something new in your driveway. I do have something new in my driveway. It's not mine. Uh, so the Kia Forte GT today was swapped out for the 2022 GMC Yukon AT4. Okay. Um, it is enormous and white, which isn't the best color for a Yukon. Um, it's just I don't have to tell you, Chris. You have a white suburban, but it's <laughs> it's a lot of real estate for that much it's, it's not that it's not color it's just that it doesn't have any shift to it yeah. um so it's a weird truck so it has it has magna ride um it has like the full two-speed transfer case uh it's the big thing about the at4 is skid plates so it's got thank, a lot of skid plates thank you auto auto trader canada for let me borrow your image uh, yeah, that very well could be the truck that's sitting outside. It right might now. be for sure. If you have a picture of the license plate, I could tell you for sure. But yeah, you know, th- so the base price of the AT4, and you know, AT4 is akin to what Chevy's Z, uh, Z71 package is. Yep. Base price is 66.1. Um, this has the 6.2, and that is a $2,600 option. It's got a couple other nonsense things, but the total price on this one is 78.6, which is a number. It's um, yeah, you know, the, my, my running joke is that 50 is the new 35. So like what's 78, like, right. And, and Yukons have never been cheap. No. The thing is the Denali that I had at like last fall, um, was naughty. It was like 2,600 bucks different. So, you know, they're kind of giving you like your paths at this point in a GMC dealership, but taking it on a road trip this weekend, probably going to hook a trailer up to it. And yeah, we'll have more news. Uh, I, 
I really want someone to go wheel one. I want to know how much those rear lower control arms catch and handle. Oh, catch. Yeah. I like when I, when I, I'm trying to find a, a, a rear shot of a, of a AT4 right now. Um, but like all, when I'm behind one in traffic, that's all I can look at is those <laughs> rear lower control arms just it's sticking. Yeah, it's oh, oh dang. Like they're, they're, I'm, and I'm assuming lower control arm. That's probably not even the right phrase. Trailing arms. I don't, I'm not a system. No, I think you're right. Lower control. control arm. (laughs) Somebody get Dan Edmonds back on the show and talk about suspension. So I saw just shooting a message. (laughs) But no, like I look at them in traffic all the time and I'm like, that's going to catch on something. It's a fire road truck. Nobody's going to do anything hardcore with it. Um, You know, it's got the tow hooks and it's got less highway ish tires, but. It's not, it's not a real off-road thing. You know, it, it's a couple, it's a package um, to make What's you. What's the tow rating on that thing? Mm. It used to be 7,800, but it is. I, I would know this if we were recording a week from now because I would have put the review together. 7,700. Okay. Um, and, and I'd have to expect That's that not the. awful. No, it's, it's pretty strong. A, it's a, yeah, it's kind of standard now for, for what you'd expect. So by uh, Kevin, I have a 17 Suburban Premier and it's 5,000 pounds. Oh gosh. Because it's the Magna Ride with the, the auto yeah. leveling. My, uh, my truck does more than that. My truck should not be able to tell more than that. So anyways, yeah, we'll circle back on this thing, but you know, it's an interesting proposition and yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's all you got. That's all I got. Uh, I've driven uh, it about 0.6 miles. So uh, <laughs> Oh, did you, so you, you own it now? Did you buy it yourself? Press car. Oh, no, it's, you, press, it's press car. Oh, press car. Okay, yeah. yeah sure. Yeah, Ross lives close to the fleets, and so he is our resident press car correspondent. Oh, very cool. So my closest fleet is in Chicago, and they're like, we're not driving anything to you. So <laughs> for him, it's like, I mean, the mileage is shorter, but it take it probably is a five-hour drive for them sometimes, too. Oh, it very well could be. Yeah. But the yeah. my mileage is longer, but like they could still beat me in the same amount. Of, anyway, mm-hmm. it's okay. I'm mm-hmm. not bitter. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> I didn't get a CT CT4 Blackwing. I'm not bitter. Oh my god, my heart. That thing was, oh. so, it was so good. Okay. I gushed yeah. over it last night, but it, it was so good. What What about? Let, let's shine some light on the next topic. <laughs> 106 <laughs> episodes and you're getting good at, at this. <laughs> this is 116, by the way. You're 10 this episodes This is 116? Off. Yeah. Oh, shit, I can't <laughs> oh, yeah, we bulked all those together. Anyway, guess guess um, who does all the prep work? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Lightforks has graciously come on board with the GX460 project and sent over some uh, Genesis LEDs. So those will be on on the truck shortly. Are they driving lights? They're no, driving lights. I don't want yep. the shopping tab. Give me the um, image tab. They should be a huge, huge, huge upgrade from the you know forty five dollar Hellas that are on it right now. And Ooh, yeah, well, crap. Sorry. It's they're enormous. Um, the build quality is excellent, but like I picked these things up and I was like, oh shit! Like there goes my <laughs> airflow. Like it's gonna it's gonna block half freaking you know grill. But no, yeah. it, it, it they're really really nice kit and. Uh, and another thank you to Lightforce for sending them over. So. Can I get one? <laughs> I feel like one would be enough. <laughs> like one, one center mounted. Yeah, yeah right? just one. Human. <laughs> it's like Cyclops. <laughs> I'm trying to. Really I'm, I was trying to freaking Google fast enough. So oh, well, it's I'm not a Holden. That's pictures. not going to help. Why Holdens are cool? I know, but like that's not. I was trying to get a Toyota. Yeah. Like I, that's I them. know it's a Lexus, but like I was trying to get a Toyota, but. You got a whole new bumper right there. Dude, they are big. Got some yellow filters for them. So God damn, those are huge. They're enormous. And I thought the hell is that one on it were big, but these things are, I mean, they're they're beautiful, beautiful products. Um, but it, it's gonna be comical. So do they all have that chrome bezel or are they kind no, of no, no, no. I think black, there was right? yeah, they're black. I think there was a different series that had the chrome bezel, but oh, okay. The dechroming process of my truck is going to take probably a year. So. Oh, dude, yeah, I'm not a fan of chrome. <laughs> I had to do that to my to my Chevy. Uh, I got a 3500. Oh lead. my god, what year? Uh, it's a 14. Uh, so that's like 50 square feet of chrome real estate. Oh, dude, it's a landmark. 
It's got the the four doors and the eight foot bed. I mean, it's yep. just, it just keeps going. Oh, it's an eight foot. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> That's a monster. Oh, they're great trucks, though. That's the truck. This is this is Ross's truck. So now now imagine there being no space whatsoever here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's gonna be like half an inch between the lights and the uh, and the winch box and it, the. Uh, it's gonna see you're gonna see bar. just the V part of the L in Lexus, like just a little <laughs> corner. And I'm painting that L black sometime this summer <laughs> when the weather's actually cooperative. So have people done any kind of like a full mesh replacements for that type of thing or for something? the grill? Yeah, people have done the uh, F Sport upgrade, but okay. Lexus discontinued the grill. So finding one, it's like 1,100 bucks for the grill. No way. No, so no. They, they've also Park just done grill. the Toyota uh, Prado swap where it just says Toyota across. And you know how much that costs? It's a lot too. <laughs> it's like four grand. Yeah, exactly. No way. What? He's got to yeah. ship it over from Australia. Oh, that's that's ridiculous, dude. I know. I know. That's I'm just going to supercharger. It, there, somebody's developing one, but yeah, I'm just going to buy, <laughs> I'm going to buy a Forerunner front end and just like somehow craft it on and call it that. Um, get a get a good auto body guy and just be like make it work <laughs> just have a couple of buddies yeah, over with like work. a keg and a case of bond yeah <laughs> a saza a keg yep. and you're good to go i've seen stranger things so yeah <laughs> so the only other lexus update is uh still trying to sort out some kind of spare tire carrier um you know it, it doesn't fit i'm gonna take another crack at it and try to fit it under the truck but like under the truck's not ideal just because it always gets hung up and it always pulling the spare out from underneath when you desperately need it and you're like perks on some rocks is or mud more, more headaches or mud yeah or mud. what about uh so, do they make a swing arm rear bumper for that thing they do uh the prices they're very proud of them like fall <laughs> off fall off the chair kind of, kind of yeah no I, I actually i just bought a forerunner and uh i've been looking at front and rear bumpers and i, I really want the swing arm kit on the rear fit a which full size. uh what gen forerunner yeah i say it's a fifth gen it's a 21 okay uh trd okay. off-road premium have so you, have I you checked C- cbi already cbi makes good stuff cbi, CBI yeah i actually did the full cbi skids um okay. in, <laughs> in steel and i was looking at the front bumper from them just like the bull bar winch and uh the rear i was looking maybe victory four by four victory uh, makes okay stuff um i don't want to talk poorly about them i've seen some questionable things Okay. Like their like front weld, bumper. Like welds and stuff? Or? No, not welds. Just like their front bumper. If you mount the winch to where the mid, where the winch plate is actually supposed to mount, you actually have to run the line. To get out of the fair lead, the line has to go up and over through the fair lead. So it actually causes abrasion like before it actually gets Yeah, that's a bumper. terrible design, um, actually. But, I mean, I owned a 5th Gen 4Runner. My brother currently owns a 5th Gen 4Runner. Uh, we're, we tend to be a Toyota podcast. Chris has a, a Chevy now, but like He's owned a couple more Toyotas than anything else. Um, so I'll get you in contact if you want with my friends at Iron Man who did the. Uh, oh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Actually, Iron Man reached out to us several years oh, yeah? ago to, to do something uh, on the, the rally, like the rally cross scene. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't really know how I can make that cross over. And then <laughs> kind of dropped the ball. And two years later, I have a forerunner and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> They're the guys. I mean, Ross, Ross has an email for you. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to reach back out and yeah. do like do they, some uh, stuff. They hooked me up on the Lexus. That's the that's the Iron Man bumper and suspension on the Lexus, and it is it's freaking awesome. Yeah, that bumper like, looks killer. Can't say enough good about it. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll hook out. Um, Does Iron Man do a, a, a like a two inch lift uh, mid travel type of thing for the runner? Yeah, that's what they do. There's they have two kits. They have the Nitro kit and they have the Foam Cell Pro. Um, you know. Foam cells being a, a little you better. Foam cell, right? Yeah, I got the foam cells. Dude, they're like freaking like canisters. It's crazy. <laughs> but the truck rides off road like it rides on road. It's amazing. Oh, so you get a, a good like mix of the two. Cause I, I do like to, to daily this thing on the road. That's what mine is. Okay. Yep. So we get you in contact with them. Right on. Yeah, I get so overwhelmed sometimes. You would go through the forums looking at all oh, the options God. and you get like, you find the right one, and then and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the the guys are like talking smack about it. You know, I don't know what to go with now. It's hard to hard to pick. There's two sides to every coin. Ah, uh, for sure. So you said and, TRD off road premium. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So is that KDSS? Uh, it KDSS does actually. Is an option, but it has it. Good. It does. Yeah. KDSS. So there's is a. Fucking awesome. There's a. Yeah, dude, it's rad. Stage <laughs> two or a 
stage one, but they don't have stage three with KDSS at Iron That's probably Bruce for the stage two. Yeah, that would be the, the one to go with. KDSS yeah. is so good. It's so good. I like, I had only heard people talk about it and then I drove truck with it and got my Lexus as it was like, oh my God. Kind of blows your mind, right? Like my, my girlfriend has a 2020, same exact trim without it. And that thing's like rocking us back and forth on the smallest thing. And this one's just like floating right over. You got to love KDSS. It's pretty sweet. So good. You know, it's good when uh, Dan Edmonds, who was a suspension engineer for Toyota, buys a forerunner with KDSS. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's like, so, I got to have it. He's, he's our, he's our suspension guru. That's like, <laughs> he's like the we, suspension if guru. We, yeah. It's like, if we have questions, like what's Dan say? <laughs> exactly. That's, that's a good guy to have in your corner. Yeah, he's a good dude. So yeah, we'll get you in contact with uh right on with them. Um so that's Sweet. all my news. So Chris, uh how was the trip? I uh, yeah, I I went to the mountains. So they they are nearby. Um so I talked uh last episode, we got the leveling kit on the suburban. Uh it's just a, a one and a half metal bracket in the front and then some plastic spacers on top to get it to two and a half in the front, and then it's a, a one inch uh metal spacer in the rear. It's works um, a lot better when you can share your screen. Right? I, <laughs> I updated the computer yesterday, Cabot. Like, it wouldn't let me share anything. Like, we wouldn't, like, this is how I do, this is how I install images into the video form of the podcast, but I just right. share the screen so that way I don't have to go it also back helps our guests, you yeah, know, so, so they does. can, like, like follow. No, along. it's that, the visual is killer, yeah. No. Uh, so yeah. did you have to, like, de- like, go back to a different update to get it to work, or? No, no, no. I just had to actually, you know, turn on permission to let uh, yeah. zoom record my screen <laughs> because mac was mad that zoom was trying to record my screen and i hadn't and really? it was like you, you must close zoom now and reopen zoom and we were like 30 minutes into a show already so oh damn yeah 115 episodes and i made pretty big technical glitch uh, <laughs> on that it's one okay. so but it's so I, I've added Redstein uh, Pinza all-terrain tires to it, which I've covered on the show a number of times. I put the Z71 wheels on it because I didn't like 22s. I liked 18s because I like sidewall. I'm team more sidewall. Um, and so right. it, this is the set of tires second trip out to the mountains in the winter. They crushed it again. Um, we got quite a bit. Of, you can tell from the, the Suburban, like it's, it's covered in snow. Um, we had quite a bit of snow while we were out there. Um, we were, we were in Frisco, so we weren't really that, I mean, we're at 9,000 feet. We weren't that high up, but um, love the lift. It, it, it felt better. The only issue was it was insanely windy all the way out there and then all the way back. I don't know what, it, like, I, I should have taken a picture because, like, like, I live in Kansas City. We drive to Colorado quite a bit. Like, I'm used to having the steering wheel tilted a little bit into the breeze. Like, it's just something you're used to if you drive in windy areas. This was a little more extreme. Like it was like, are you sure? And then like I went to the, I should take it a picture because I went to the tire pressure gauge uh, readout on the on the suburban, and literally both right side tires were two psi higher Holy than shit. both left side tires. Yeah, like just it, getting smoked on that side. Yeah, oh it was leaning God. a little bit, <laughs> but it with the with the Magna ride and the and the auto level or the ride leveling in the back, like I I really couldn't tell a difference, and so. Um, Ross, it was, I know I've talked on the show before, like I saw, I like on our Montana trip, like we had 19 uh, MPG, like mm-hmm. um, this was the first time since that trip that I saw like 18.8. Like it's been a long time since I saw numbers that high again, like some of them in the 16s and the 17s, mainly probably because of the wind and then elevation change, but mm-hmm. coming down, it, it, it got close to, to almost getting to 19 again, which I was kind of impressed solid for so. big ass truck. It is a big ass truck and it did great. It, it all the my parents went with us. And so one kid always goes and rides with them just because he wants to be, he's like, if I go with them, there's no rules. Like I'm with my grandparents. <laughs> For the other three are like, fine, he's out. We're good now. Like I have a lot of kids. Um, <laughs> but like they they had a blast. Uh actually, oh, I'm not sharing that. They look hilarious. Um, but we took them, we we tried to go tubing last year and we couldn't do that because reservations were booked for like weeks later and so when we got to november this year i was like hook them up like i just knew we were going again so we went tubing twice the um we had a great time they were they the kids were fine but like the 
we were supposed to drive home Friday. So Thursday, uh, my daughter woke up and she was just miserable. Take her to the urgent care, double ear infection. While we're at urgent oh. care with her, my uh, seven-year-old starts throwing up. And so what? like, yeah, like, so he's back at the cabin with my this. parents <laughs> vomiting. We're getting texts like, hey, he's vomiting. I'm like, all right, well, I had to get the older two boys to a ski lesson at 10. So like literally got back to the house. And it, of course it's like, white out blizzarding conditions at this time which is one of the reasons that i love colorado because like they'll shut down 70 but like town is open like oh, stores yeah. are open everything was like, like urgent care wasn't closed everything was good um so i got i got my daughter back to the house we picked up her prescription got her back to the house took the older two boys to ski lesson then uh grabbed <clears throat> seven year old and took him back to urgent care and somewhere in there squeezed in an hour of tubing but, and I saw the same nurse and, and, and doctor while we were at urgent care. And I was like, you guys have now seen 50% of my children. Like, I don't, I don't know who else, like, do you guys want to see the big two? Like we, but no, we were good. Um, better hope think, my back. Yeah. I do have a video oh, of them. Like the, the, the conditions while they were skiing got uh, a little sketch. Um, Cause it was not like that big of a, a snow hill, but like, you couldn't see the top of the hill anymore. Like it oh, was damn. pretty like my, I, I'm pretty sure my dad's filming and he couldn't tell where the boys were just looking at his phone. So that's Jeez. why it feels like it's off. It's because he, he literally couldn't see the kid on the, Oh, there he is. Or like, he was filming with his left hand and get the snowball ready with his right. Right. <laughs> that's a hell of a snow day, dude. Right. Yeah, right. And so like, it was, and it's not a huge hill. Like it is the first time they've ever skied before. So it was good. No good poles. First it. time aggressive. Okay. They're doing good, man. Yeah. They they were all right. They, they, yeah. Uh, I, I would say they, uh, uh, not accommodated, uh, acquitted themselves. Fine. Like acquitted, acquitted, not acclimated, acclimated. I still don't think acquitted. that's right. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're definitely guilty, acquitted, especially yeah. those two. <laughs> um, but no, it was great. Like we had some, like it was just awesome weather because it would it would literally be like sunny and then snowing and then sunny and then so and then like oh, one time know. it was just sunny and just snowing i was like wait is it blowing off something or is it actually snowing like i it was it was fun it was fun to like we've done this trip a couple of times now where it's spring break and we like force ourselves back into winter <clears throat> except this time it snowed here before we even were able to leave like we, we were still in winter kind of thing like we never got right. out of it um and so i think i sent the picture to ross of the suburban like we're we're in my driveway and it's already covered in snow and icicles and crap like we, we haven't even left yet guys like this, the whole point is to travel and go to winter but no we it was a good trip other than like at the end where the kids were just like no we're gonna be sick now and you're like all right well we got nine hours in the yeah, car that's tomorrow a, so that's a uh, hectic day right there good lord well, that's, why, that's the world I live in. So, <laughs> people are like, I'm tired. I was like, you don't know the depths of tired yet. Yeah. <laughs> it goes <Yeah>. deeper. <laughs> the levels. Yes. Seriously. I've been tired since 2008. <laughs> <laughs> which, I, side note, I've been listening to, a, there's a parenting podcast, which, I, which is two English comedians, which absolutely cracks me up. But one of the guests I had on the other day is also a celebrity. Like they're getting ready to have the baby and people are telling them to like store sleep. And he his account is like, that's not possible. Like <laughs> your body doesn't wake up and be like, you have an extra 45 minutes of sleep last night. I'll pack that away. No, like it it's, doesn't. Yeah. It's usually like you got an extra 45 minutes. You're going to be more tired now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you might have overslept there. Yeah. Weird shit. So I don't know why people tell other people to <laughs> store sleep. So that's dumb. Bullshit. <sighs> All right, Kevin, let's do you. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> fun stuff. The real fun stuff. Way more fun stuff. Seriously. So Where, you want to? You, you run it, Ross. This is- okay. All right. So, I mean, let's start at the beginning. What what was your uh, intro to cars? What got you into cars? Like, I mean, this is a, a long story here. So, how did it start? Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, basically, you know, I, I feel like a lot of gearheads are the same way, but you kind of, you're kind of just born into it. You, you feel like you want to drive cars. You want to drive anything. You're interested in trucks trains airplanes all that stuff as a kid yep. for me i lived in santa cruz in the bonnie dune mountains on a ranch it's actually our ranch sign right here and uh we had a front end loader and a ride-on lawnmower 
and I was always just trying to bug my dad to let me drive it. Uh, eventually I could reach the pedals and the steering wheel and he would let me go down to the barn and pick it up. And that's when I actually fell in love with, you know, mechanically driving things. And, um, so really I actually start with tractors, tractors. to be completely honest. <laughs> Get yourself into the, uh, who was it that was doing the like Porsche tractor racing on Laguna Seca? Uh, it's that's Zwart. That's Zwart and Pat Long. Pat Long? And they, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. how long was doing that? They, well, they're like tractors. Porsche tractors. Yeah. Oh, that's badass. I think they yeah. top out at like 12 miles an hour, though. <laughs> so, like, that's good racing fast. right there. I got to okay, see if so, I can find that picture of Pat Lowe. So uh, did, did you do any stupid shenanigans with tractors or you try to keep it in check so that she'd get the uh, the ticket into a car? Yeah, I didn't really want to lose that privilege, to be honest. But uh, I, I was, you know, I was like backing up the trailers and all that type of stuff. So I'd, I'd go hitch a trailer, bring it up to the ranch house and and back it in between, you know, two cars, my mom's and my dad's, and my mom would always have a panic attack. Because it's basically, you know, I was like six years old doing this, you know, she's oh, like, geez. she's like, that's not acceptable. <laughs> How big of a tractor are we talking? How big of a trailer? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's bigger than that. That's hilarious. Those are the Porsches, sorry. So <laughs> Look at this guy doing like the full winged out thing. Dude, yeah. that's Pat Long. <laughs> How did I miss this event? He won. By the I way. think it was at, is Ren, Renfest correct? Ren... It's not Ren Tech because that's that's Mercedes. I think it's Ren Fest. I'll, I'll I'll Google. Tell oh, Ren, right. Didn't uh, didn't Ren Tech used to do Porsches too or no? Ren Ren Tech. Oh, Ren Sport they... maybe. Maybe oh, Ren Sport was a shop near me, and I thought Ren Tech was a Mercedes shop. Yeah, Ren Sport has been definitely a, not Ren they're, Fest they're nationwide. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. Okay, anyway, so, so what kind so of tractor? Tra- 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 yeah. Yeah, from tractors. Uh, I actually ended up moving to Massachusetts. I lived there for 10 years. Oh, really? Where in Mass? Yeah. Uh, I live in Weston. Okay. Weston and Wellesley. Gotcha. Um, and that's where I actually started, you know, racing. Uh, I went to F1 indoors mm-hmm. and started doing some indoor karting stuff just for fun as soon as I could. How old were they, you? At uh, this point, you know, 12, okay. 12 or 13 years old. I think that's when they let you actually go out there and compete. So I started doing that and then I saw they had like an indoor league and a series. So I did their like winter series, started meeting the guys. And as you enter this building, um, it was really, it was really cool. Actually, they used to have like old Porsche cup cars in there and, and a couple of different vehicles. And then they would have probably two or three different shifter carts, all CRGs. Cause they were, uh, they were like a CRG dealership as well. The owner, RJ Valentine, um, so I was just eyeing these things because they're so much cooler than indoor carts, right? Like these European carts are just infinitely cooler than, they're, than the, yeah. the bumper cars you're driving around. But uh, kind of, I slowly convinced my dad to, to talk to these guys and we bought, ultimately bought a used uh, shifter or it was a used tag cart from the 2011 world championships. So it had one race only, right? Which is a classic, uh, the thing's been bent 17 different times, but either way, we bought, we bought the cart and started racing uh, at the outdoor track, which is called F1 outdoors, same, same owner and everything. And that track was actually still to this day, one of the coolest tracks I've ever raced in karting. Um, Similar cart, actually very different. So I, I, would, look, <laughs> I would look up a uh, uh, CRG. God damn. What was the thing called? Like a night rider or something like that. Ooh. Um, Black Knight, I think maybe. Ooh, Black CRG Knight. Black Knight. Sounds fast. Yeah, they're great carts. They were. And so I, I started running uh, the local stuff there. And I was running a, a class called Rotax Junior and ran that and started doing regional stuff with the RMAX Northeast Challenge. I was up in New York. We were in Connecticut, Beaver Run, Pennsylvania, all kinds of stuff. Is that the same Rotax that builds the Can Am motors? It is. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yep, same company. And even to this day, they still have a series. Uh, not nearly as popular as it was when I started, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. But is it a Dark Rider? Dark Rider. Potentially. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. I'm, I'm, I'm moved Googling on to so the, hard. Yeah, no, it's, that's, <laughs> oh, that's shit. exactly what it is. Yep. Okay. That thing's crazy. That's a shifter because that's got the front brakes. Um, but yeah. Just so that's sweet. actually what I essentially what I race now is just for fun for training. I, I'll drive my shifter cart around, and um, but so, yeah. So 
Go ahead. How did it, what was the like segue for you from shifter cards to full size stuff? Yeah. You know, that's, that's a great question. Cause it's, a, it's a, something a lot of drivers face. It's like when they're looking to go professional or, or not be the guy that's always permanently in go-karts, you know, there are, there are 45 year old dudes <laughs> yeah. racing carts. There are, there's a master class. I mean, you could be, I've seen 75 year old dudes ripping carts. Um, Some of the fastest but, people I've ever seen around an autocross are like in their seventies, you know? Oh yeah. These guys Freaking are nuts. Mobbing. Yeah. I'm like, damn, dude, that's got to hurt your back or something. I don't know. <laughs> dude, I, I'm 6'4". I have a hard time fitting in them. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. The the fast autocross stuff is is typically the smaller car too, right? Yeah. Short wheelbase and all that. Uh, but the transition for me, you know, I do a lot of research. I used to watch um, Safe is Fast videos. Safe is a great, great place to get, you know, uh, the information from drivers who have done the same switch and going from carts to cars you really just have to sit down and plan out what you want to do like what's your end goal for me at the time it was formula car i wanted to race indy car and do the mazda road indy uh so that's what i did i went and researched a great entry level and since i had shifter card experience i knew how to play with brake bias shift gears not over rev use front brakes all that type of stuff so i was like you know what i i'm i kind of got into this late compared to a lot of guys so at that point i'm you know, 16, 17 years old. And I was like, I'll go straight into pro Mazda. So I don't mess around with the 1600 or the F2000 type of car. So we bought a pro Mazda ourselves and raced it in What's the pro formula Mazda? car challenge. Good. What's a pro Mazda? A pro Mazda is essentially like a formula three equivalent car. Okay. And, be- and before uh, IndyCar or the road to Indy changed to a new chassis, that was their, that was their F3 equivalent. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so it would be it would be Pro Mazda, Indy Lights, Indy Car. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, I'll just go do a regional series and run my own team and, and train and see what I can do and maybe get into. Yeah, it's exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And see Who's if I can there? get into a uh, into a car with the with like the road Indy guys. Who was so working ran... on the uh, like your your shifter cart? And then when you got up to here, who was working on that? Was it just you and your dad? I had a, no, so my, so I'm a first generation driver. So my, my parents just don't get the mechanical thing. They, they never wrenched on anything. Yeah. Uh, they did support me a lot. You know, they would, uh, oops, excuse me. They would um, come to the track and, and waste their entire weekend away watching me turn laps in a go-kart. So I got to appreciate that. But once I got into the pro Mazda, it was really more about uh, one of my mentors, Brian Keck. So Brian Keck was the guy who ran me in go-karts when I was back on the West Coast. There it is. That's me right there. That's awesome. Give me enough time. I can find it. (laughs) You can see Keck Keck racing on the back there. Yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful car, man. Um, And the guy right behind me in the pro form car is Hunter Pickett. He's a good friend of mine still. And he was running the muscle milk team. Um, they had family connection to the muscle milk program. So they had a, a really bitching team, good operation. And it was pretty competitive. And it looks like you were ahead of them. I was, this was, uh, <laughs> this was actually, this was the formula. This is the biggest race we did in formula car challenge. We opened for IndyCar during the Sonoma grand prix, uh, save Mart or whatever it was, mm-hmm. or the GoPro grand prix, I think is what it was called. Oh, bro. Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Nick Woodman is in that blue car. Back here? Yeah. That guy started GoPro. Oh, so wow. that's, Yeah, it's definitely GoPro because all the banners are in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he uh, he and damn there's... near killed me at Laguna Seca going up the hill towards the corkscrew. He oh, shit. got off the wheel and, and damn near T-boned me. Oh, shit. Into the, oh, it was crazy. I was like, give me a free camera for that one or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was inches. There's also GoPro in the video. There's GoPros on tops of all the cars, so yeah. there probably is a video somewhere. Yeah, true. Very true. I know he has a video. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's not going to let you show it anywhere. <laughs> he's also not going to do a damn thing without a oh, GoPro no. on, his, on his rig or whatever. Took yeah. It snapped it. <laughs> okay. So from, from there, I went to uh, – I won that championship, and then I went to Pelfrey and did a, a test out at Palm Beach International Raceway. And uh, – they gave me a number and it was just a little too high for me. And I just, I didn't have the funds. So I started to think and plan out what I actually could afford to do and make it to a professional level and actually get some championships and some recognition. 
So one of my buddies growing up karting was Alex Keys. And Alex, while I was running that Pro Mazda, had left the Formula car scene and gone to GRC, which was Global Rallycross, the Red Bull series. And I watched this whole season, man, and he was running the lights car, and it was it was killer. Uh, I was like, right I need to do jumps. I want to do, right I want to do, you know, transitions and all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, that's when I <clears throat> reached out to him, and I was like, dude, get me in with your team. He was racing for a great organization called Dryer and Reinbold. And I was like, all right, started conversations with them, got a deal going. Yep, there's there's the car. So wait, and you you went, I need to find another series. Yeah. And you were in an an aero car, aero open wheel car, and went, let me get in a hatchback and just have air underneath me now. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a classic transition, you know. Once you get good with the high arrow and the open wheel stuff, you can go into any type of sports car racing and and make a relatively seamless transition. Going the other way is a little harder because you got to learn arrow and, and and trimming out cars and and learn how to use the brakes when you're fully loaded up on arrow and 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 coming off of them. I mean, it's it's a bigger transition and it's terrifying I'm to sure trust that 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 you know grip you, you can't see think the shifter card experience translated more to the open wheel with downforce or the downforce and open wheel translated more to what followed i'd say it absolutely tra- uh, translated more towards open wheel mm-hmm. even though you learn the downforce element but the mechanical grip that those cars make and the type of racing you do and the type of passing and braking and all that it's um uh, it's more, much, much more similar. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why you see 90 or more percent of these formula car guys coming from karting. Right. Right. That makes yeah. sense. And so even, you know, it's weird though. Cause you know, you can still, there it is. <laughs> that was the port of LA. That was the weekend. I won uh, the championship there. Nice. I love the masts in the background. Like, right. Yeah. 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 Flying through the air. Here are boats. No, that was a that was a good time, man. Yeah, so uh, I actually won that championship by one point. What? Oh wow! I started. Okay. I had a horrible weekend chasing engine gremlins and all kinds of electrical problems, and we got shuffled all the way to the back and just barely by the skin of our teeth made the final event. It was a ten car final, so I started tenth, five rows back, and went from uh, tenth to first. How many laps? In ten laps. Oh my god! So I. So basically, the there was a perfect storm. The two guys who were essentially P1, P2 in the championship took each other out into turn two. <laughs> and I went all the way at the inside, followed Alex Keys. Uh, so from 10th to, to second place in two corners on the first lap. And then uh, Alex had an engine problem, and I passed him and won by one point. Oh my God. That's insane. Craziest, <laughs> craziest day of my life to this day, to be honest. Who do you remind that you beat by one point? Uh, <laughs> Everybody? It would be, it would be uh, let's see, Oliver Erickson, I believe. Okay, that, that's a name. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure he still hates that. But he's a good dude. He's really good, yeah. That's funny. So what's the, uh, I mean, what's driving one of those things like? Is it, so first of all, it's, is it, it's paddles, right? No, those are sequentials. Sequentials. Oh wow. Huh. Okay. And those are those are mid-engined with very little travel. And they're they're all the same type of car, just a chassis with with what looks like a Ford Fiesta body on it. Mm-hmm. But uh they got insanely hot. You know, you had that engine sitting right behind you, and there was no type of cooling or any ducting. There was a lot of dust that came in through the doors. That's what I went to the following year which is the, the M Sport Ford Fiesta, mm. which is a great car. Full-time uh, four-wheel drive? Yeah, that one's front engine, four-wheel drive, okay. uh, two-liter turbo, makes about anywhere from like 50 to 70 pounds of boost based on your oh, anti Holy shit. shit. It's just a massive, it's oh an IED, God. dude. It's, it's an explosion every time you drive it. So. And, it and it has anti like too, right? Huge number. Oh, yeah. Full, yep, full anti like system. <laughs> oh, my God. This is a big so, car. Are these things, aside from motors, like the chassis and the suspension setup, does it make it like playful or is it just regardless of terrain, it's just so buttoned down that it always feels like there's just endless grip and thrust? It's kind of a bit of both, to be honest. 
I think that's the beauty of rally cross is you need a car that is playful and uh, easy to easy to control. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a seamless, you know, you know exactly where it's going to be. It's very intuitive. But at the same time, it does make grip when you want it to. Um, that's our biggest problem in rally cross is learning how to make grip in low, low grip surfaces, you know? Yes. Um, that was our season opener there. That was, that was actually a really cool corner. It's so much dirt in the air. It's like yeah. Baja. Like it's... <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a, that's a deceiving picture too. Cause that berm is just massive, massive berm. So it's, it's a right turn, right? Like you're just sliding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> you just charge in, you actually take a, a tabletop jump and then you land and you have this big, super dugout berm. The ruts got crazy through there. All that dirt was so soft, you know. It looks how, like it. how long did it take learning like tabletops and berms and, and jumps compared to the open wheel cars? Like that's just go fast around the corners, right? Yeah, did you, you have any like, 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 is there motocross training somewhere in there? That's like, what I was going to ask. You have any, ever like jumped a dirt bike or something before you nothing. hit a double? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> basically you you uh you shit your pants and you look at the data and you get a quick yeah. you know lesson on how to load the front and then load the rear off the face of the jump and after that it's all feel wow. you got to nose you got to nose a couple landings you got to land on the rear and break some stuff just to just to get consistent and thank god i had that training because now with the nitro stuff we're doing the 100 foot gap jumps and it's like i you know coming into feet. that coming into that never jumping it would be absolutely horrifying so you said there's not that much suspended travel so on the lights car on the lights car so did impacts like they didn't well they would they would rattle your spine yeah okay yeah. that's that's what you would expect. yeah i used to have i was i have back problems now but i had back problems when i was way too young to have back problems Hey, so is Ross. Yeah, ditto. <laughs> yeah. Not for rally cars. But... <laughs> Either way, it still haunts you. <laughs> yes, yes. So so the, the nitro cars, so nitro rally cross. Yeah. Oh, we Much skipped some beetles. We skipped some beetles, <laughs> but uh, a little more suspension travel. And yeah, is it is it more forgiving forgiving to drive? Like the, the, the lights cars from just the videos, it looks like you know you miss a line or you get into the gas too soon or too late and it's just your sol are, are the nitro rally cross cars any more forgiving or is it worse yeah so essentially like lights is also run in nitro rally cross they don't do the big jumps obviously mm -hmm. um but those those cars are pretty temperamental so they can be very fragile they can have a lot of random electro electronic issues so i'm glad i don't race them anymore but i think they do serve a good purpose as far as a training car they're also half the horsepower. And again, that mid-engine configuration, very little travel. So those you have to drive differently. That's a momentum-based car. You have to open up your lines, get on the power early and, and just hold on. And that thing's bucking around like crazy. Uh, whereas the, the supercars are purpose-built, you know, rally cross machines. So they have proper suspension, proper travel, twice the horsepower at least. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can, you have to drive those quite a bit different. And that right there's the S1 Quattro I raced this past year. Awesome. Is it twice the fun, twice the power and twice the travel? Uh, it's probably 10 times the fun, <laughs> at least. Fuck yeah. Yeah, the supercars are, are legit, man. That looks like, it looks like a good time. It, I mean, it looks like it was dropped from a spaceship and it just it. <laughs> it looks like it hurt. <laughs> Those, you know, the landings are pretty soft. Look, I mean, look at the travel that those things have when they're drooped. Man. And they fly really well. They fly better than, you know, some of the off-road trucks I see. I think that has more to do with suspension and, and tuning that in, you know. But Can you adjust midair, like once you're in the air? Like gas it's hard to adjust back. The only way to, to pick the nose up, what we've learned, is to actually shift up a gear. Huh. And that, that like kind of kicks the front up just a tiny bit if you need it. But with any type of jump, I mean, your takeoff is everything. Well, most, most of it, if you're in the air and you let off or you hit the brake, instant nose that. Yeah. I would say, can't you drop the nose with the, yeah. Nose with the brakes. Oh down. yeah. You could do that. But see, in, you and know, motocross, to get a little rise. Yeah. Like the moto, the motorbikes, you know, they, they do a good job exaggerating that a lot of the freestyle guys, you know, yeah, definitely. What's your uh, favorite track, favorite places you've driven both on tarmac and on rally surfaces? 
Uh, you know, we raced a, a, the first year of a nitro track in Arizona, and that track was super cool. Really nice dirt, cool, cool track layout, nice features, uh, made for good racing. There's also our season finale in this past season. That was in, um, that was in Stark, Florida. Okay. And that track was excellent. That actually had much more tarmac to it than any other track we've been to this past year or for past several years. So uh, I enjoyed that a lot, obviously, coming from a from an uh, asphalt background. Yeah. yeah. I just I love watching them fly through the air. It's so this funny. video is crazy. <laughs> like, you know, I remember watching Pastrana. This must have been 10 or 15 years ago in an STI doing like the world's longest jump. And now it's like you guys are kind of getting there on a normal basis with these hundred footers <laughs> you know that's the problem with travis man he just keeps keeps trying to to make it more intense which is great for what people want to see but you know as a driver there's a mental element where it's like all right like every year you gotta you gotta nut up and and mm -hmm. figure out how to overcome your fear again and, and just get it done right. so I, it's i appreciate it but it also it's like when you sit there in the off season and you're doing nothing you're like oh god what am i doing with my life <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah. it, seems, it seems hectic like it doesn't look like it's a nice relaxing drive like <laughs> oh yeah this is a nice little video of a roll oh here it goes there there it goes. Going. <laughs> usually see the wipers going after the roll the wipers were already going before the rolling yeah i think that i think i like grabbed it with it's on the it's a button on the uh button. on the wheel there huh. oh this was a good one this actually this track was really fun despite this roll damn near totaled the car but uh oh, man, Jesus. the dirt was awesome and it's a short course track that's been repurposed for nitro uh it's erx motorsports park um that that place was awesome yeah that looks like uh, a crazy time. very cool high speed track crazy 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 mm -hmm. utah was utah had so much potential too that one you were showing the videos with the big gap jump and we had a really cool fan base and audience there too but Unfortunately, no matter what we did, it was just a huge dust bowl and it made yeah, the racing the really tough. Uh, you, visibility was like the worst possible. <laughs> like the, the, just the, the consistent amount of air. Like I only think of trophy trucks being at these heights all the time. Like yeah, yeah. they're hatchbacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's sort wild. Sort of. Sort of. I mean, they're hatchbacks. Like, sure. You know? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> consistently yeah, being that's five the to six feet. That's is it the okay track there, oh yeah. my god that's insane that's like again i know camera angle plays a part of it like i've died but like they're not it's not like when you're like hey i jumped my truck and i have like inches of all four tires off the ground like <laughs> when you're measuring it in feet that's different <laughs> like <it's... laughs> if uh if you could run a couple of the circuits that you run in a street car or a street truck which one would you take out Oh, streetcar. I don't think there's anything that would work. <laughs> not with, not with. Tycon Turbo. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, power is not the problem. It's the travel and the rigidity yep. and, but a truck, I mean, damn. Got you think Raptor. about like, obviously your mind goes to the Raptor, but I've seen those things kind of be nose heavy in the air. Yeah. And I don't know <laughs> if I want to be doing that. I've wound up a couple of things before. Heavy. Yeah. Just heavy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no matter how much you accelerate off that lift, like, yeah. that's going to tank forward i don't know what's the most balanced you know off off-road vehicle on the market it's hard to say Maybe. trx um, looks kind of cool yeah that, uh, i'm sure I've that's nose heavy fly. too no yeah, i think they all are they're just <laughs> so much weight up there 6900 pounds yeah that's a, um, Bronco that's a that thing was hard to manage on the street i i, I would go uh new brz with a two inch lift and just no two fuss. inches isn't enough yeah and just, and just not caring rest in peace you're back dude yeah, yeah but, i mean you know two inch lift stock suspension good lord uh, be a, a jolly good time until you end up in the hospital well what so, can i say i mean we we had a couple events where uh this is glen helen raceway here. this is our jump practice we had a couple events where the the opening or like intermission was the pit viper derby or whatever and they took oh. these clapped out minivans and random vehicles and these are these guys 
they must have been drunk or at least hung over and still drunk something that's like just their that. state of being yeah it could be their state of being anyway they would like smash all the windows out paint the shit out of them and then go out and try and hit the tabletops and the step-ups and do a full-blown uh-huh. race and i i literally witnessed like two cars rolling no roll cages no hans device just what just rednecks and just wait just liability waivers it was it it's just yeah you sign your life away and yeah I don't blame them for implementing Thanks. that, but dude, it was so entertaining. So if they can do it, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff out there that could, whether or not I want to do it is a different story. <laughs> so. I feel like I've seen the pit viper thing somewhere. <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. It might <laughs> Probably on YouTube. When you're, when you're like, when the butterflies are going and you're nervous about the final or whatever it is, and you watch that, I mean, it totally takes you away. <laughs> That's so good. Where, where did the front end blow up? Uh, oh, that was Utah. Was that oh, Utah? Yeah, that video, man, they did me dirty. <laughs> what was that that gets ejected forward from the car? The that spring? is the uh, the basically the housing for the shock. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, for the audio listener, um, Audi hatched <laughs> towards camera. Shock housing also towards camera at speed and tire and hub and everything else that goes with it collapsing yeah that uh <laughs> that video went absolutely viral that got about five million views on oh this my God. channel and i was like you guys didn't even tag me man oh. <laughs> like you just put this shit out there and it's like oh. come on that, they've got you added at the top now but like <laughs> oh yeah but too little too late man yeah was there a warning for that or were you you were like oh yeah so again the visibility was was a big issue it was it was a mixture of things i was in the lcq uh last chance qualifier and i miraculously had secured a second second position so i was like the last dude to make the final and i'm coming around that's literally towards the checkered and the way the track worked is you kind of like come around through this dirt chicane section and then you have this weird kind of hump in um in all dirt and then you have this big concrete tire wall extending out before you like track back onto the main straightaway and the dust was kind of lingering there and i was like still like full race mode like ready to go didn't back off should have backed off and i just went right to it man full racing like trying apex Mm -hmm. stuff and all of a sudden the dust kind of cleared right when it was too late and there's just this big honking tire and it just peeled that (laughs) whole car off so right here, this video, the whole tire, like the oh, thing will, will not turn. So it's like inching towards the wall, like ready to die. And that's when you see me pull the handbrake to pitch it and try and just drive it across the line just as much as I can get. Mm-hmm. Um, we okay, made so- the final, but unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to repair that damage. <sighs> that, was, that was pretty intense. That's a lot of repair. Yeah, I know that they could have done it. But the downside to it is once you have the axle and all that stuff sheared off like that, you don't know how much oil is left yeah. in the front diff mm-hmm. and you gotta, you gotta go through it all if you want to be safe. So oh, yeah. Yeah. they made it, they made a good call cause we had a quick turnaround to our next event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That first video buried the lead on it. You know, there's no tire wall in that first video. You're just driving towards the camera and suddenly it's. Poof. Yeah. Like I got a hell of a shot. Hey, it did crazy i love i love that nitro just like slips in other videos because that's the that's the rally guy going simmy you're breaking the car Sim- oh yeah Simi, <laughs> no their media guys are hilarious dude yeah they're killing it as you'd expect yeah their, their camera angles are just ridiculous too like mm-hmm. with the drones drones and- i'm so glad they incorporated the chase drones and everything yes. that's that's been one of the coolest things they've done like those, but yeah, I mean, it's like a damn video game, you know. It's it the does. perfect series for it. <laughs> yeah, you know? I won't play Forza if I have if I can't have this angle. Like it makes <laughs> the crazy look even crazier. <laughs> this is the this is that track in Arizona that is just awesome, dude. It looks like it flows so well, but it, it does. Still man, is... it's, it's a great track. I had a lot of issues with the step up jump here. Just kind of get in your own head if you if you case it really bad one time this is the first event i came back from that utah issue or was it this was the first event i came back to after rolling the car four times or whatever it was and and just writing the damn thing off so i was like (laughs) i don't the last thing i want to do is roll it again bitch on its hood yeah like yeah 
so i had to I had to yes. figure it out Dude, if you're, if you're into yes. rolling, have you looked at stadium super trucks? I mean, like, <laughs> you know, I have looked at that series before. I was like, like with my back, I don't think that's comfortable. They flatland yeah. off of like eight yeah, feet dude. of air. It's I don't think just... that's good for your neck or your, your brain. God damn. Think... Your biology. Sweeping yeah. statement, but I don't think anybody in that series is concerned for their job. Like you just well-being. knock your nuts every time they land. <laughs> oh, my God. It's got to be. No, I don't want to do that. It's something you'd probably love to do once and then never want to do again. Yeah, I mean, was it Matt Matthew Brabham or whatever his name is? Yeah. He just he just dominates that that series. He's is he Australian? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I just I love these guys throwing it down the inside. Like you guys, it's so much. I know, like all of uh, the rest of motorsport is like don't like NASCAR is okay with bumping. Formula One's like you can never touch, but like they they touch in rally cross like it's so yeah. much more fun to watch oh yeah contacts the way man yep. yeah that's the way i play my video games i don't need to hit the brakes i can break on you like it's exactly fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's there is a element of that in rally cross but they're they're trying to find a way to to create a rule book around it you know it's hard to make calls like that consistently yeah. right well, so that you, that is the ruin politics. someone's day <laughs> that's the politics that we have to Love deal with that can get frustrating at times how many how many guys run in the series? Uh, I believe we had so 12 or 13 entries last year. And, and is we're it like probably probably looking up to like 16 at this point? For a short track, that's enough cars. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, we, this it doesn't have to be like freaking And lights. that's the supercar category, you know, the yeah. lights category is its own animal. Yeah. So yeah. um what's in your personal garage? What's like your daily and your weekend to us? Yeah, for a while there, I was actually dailying my dually. I just, oh, God. I've always loved trucks. So man, big. So. <laughs> and oh it's God. bone stock, too. Like, I just, yep. there's nothing exciting about it. I was just like, I love this thing. Don't need to do much, though. And it was a total bitch to park anywhere. And in Nevada, it's, it's much easier. But, you know, for a while there, I had it down in, like, San Francisco. And that was just the biggest chaotic nightmare, you know? It's the <clears> worst everyone... place in <laughs> The dually with an eight foot bed. Yeah. Yeah. And a a crew cab. Yep. Yep. Just a monster. Truck is 27 feet long. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Probably. The length of a block, a city block. Could you have driven down Lombard? I don't think you could have. Like, oh, absolutely not. No. No. That would have been a horrible, horrible time. I'd probably get stuck, you know. Probably. Just like wedge it. That'd be. That's a good way to go viral. Yeah, that's a good way to get arrested. <laughs> also, yeah, yeah, we can't Which help but usually, notice you have a drone flying around. I'm usually, what's that about? Getting arrested is a good way to go viral. So, also true. Yeah. Isn't that so? That's Blake Wilkie's like whole thing is he did the bug and got arrested <laughs> in San Diego and now. Oh, this is the Baja bug guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's still the deal? Is he, is he good to go? Like, is he still in the? Is he facing charges or anything? No, I don't think that's. I think that's from like seven years ago now like yeah oh, damn. Shit. that's been now, a long yeah. time it, now, i think it's called uh, about that dude in tesla urban is yeah now now it's the guy who jumped a tesla and ran into people's car talk about nosedive holy yeah. shit did you see that thing yeah, yeah how good. could you not you know God damn. yeah okay, that was so, insanity so the dually was daily the dually was daily and... uh until i got the forerunner um I've also owned a, a 2015 F80 M3 for quite a while. Nice. That I've been okay. modifying pretty heavily. Um, I've been driving it these past couple of days. We have a little heat wave coming in, so it's been uh, it's been fun. I like to let it kind of <clears throat> chill in the garage. I put it on the tender and and warm it up every now and then. But I don't know. It's an expensive day, dude. Like I have to replace my battery. I called BMW today, and they're like, "Oh, that's two thousand dollars." What? I was like, you're high. I am not paying that. <laughs> wait, 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 what? what yeah, it's like a again? lithium ion lithium special like a M battery. Eight pound like, battery. Yeah, I was like, no way, dude. Hard no. Yeah. Is it F80 M3? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it and this is what stand? BMW was pushing on me today? I'm like, I'm almost positive I can have replaced this for like 500 bucks. And it's whatever you're trying to give me right now is just bullshit. hundred percent. What so is it a stick or auto? Yeah, it's a six-speed manual. Those things are rowdy. Like oh, dude, yeah, I got mine tuned up to about six hundred and ten horsepower, fuck. about six fifty foot pounds. Oh my god, it's a it's a monster. 
Yeah, I don't think people realize just how aggro they are. Like, oh, it's, and it's how the torque kicks in, dude. I mean, it's it's really truly like a torque monster. They're violent. Yeah, uh, but okay, that's 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 a monster. Uh, one thing I did just recently purchase is a 1988 uh, M6 E24. Bam! How much and money do you have? Huh? How much money did you spend on it, and how much <laughs> money do you intend on spending on it? Uh, so. <laughs> this has 24,000 original miles. Oh, oh my shit. gosh. Uh, it was a bring a trailer right. purchase. We got it for about 52 to 55. Um, I put probably north of five to six grand into it just to mm-hmm. make it, you know, as perfect as possible. New gas tank, uh, new mm-hmm. front control arms. We're doing some other small things, you know, repairing a little ceiling dome light and getting the cluster refinished stuff. How like new are the tires? Uh, the tires are within a year and a half and they're okay. the metric size with the OEM rim. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, we're, um, we're just glad you're not going to die due to tires. Yeah. Well, <laughs> car, I don't be, know it so ass. slow too. It's like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's the opposite of the M3. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was, yeah, it was fast in his time, but like. Or the race car. opposite. Or the risk car. <laughs> not even close yeah. not even damn close yeah. man you throw a tune and an intake on the dually and it's probably as fast as this thing well the dually's faster the dually is a is a torque machine dude that exactly. thing's got like 800 foot pounds or something 850 uh, so this oh, is I know. <laughs> this is the i'm going for a cruise but it, it's still nice like it's, it's a cars and coffee thing yeah you know, take beautiful. it to the weekenders and, and yeah. uh it is beautiful and I, it's a, it's something I hope that just appreciates, you know, it's not a car that I want to sit on forever, but it's the start of what I'm trying to do is like a, a, a collection, like an antique collection. You kind of yeah. flip and trade up. Um, it's a beautiful car. It's really, it is fun to drive, but it's, well, I'd rather, I'd have way more fun in my M3 than I would in that thing, you know, <laughs> as BMW goes towards larger and larger grills <laughs> and electrification, your BMW fleet will only increase in value that's the way i see it too and that that beaver that beaver mouthed goddamn grill just looks awful the semi-aquatic rodent you know t-e-e-f yeah so ross had an m was it an m440i recently 440i grand coupe like the new one yeah i drove it for a week um it was honestly it was a great car it just was you, you don't like you know you walk away from the car and turn around and look at it like yeah and you walk away and you're like <laughs> yeah. you're still following me stop following me stop yeah, me. stop yeah. don't scare yeah. me like that yeah but dude you didn't awesome. post pictures of it the snow pick where'd you no send me not that? yet I, I don't know i probably sent it to you on slack, slack. or something that's i have not got, I, feel, I feel like bmw is crazy though and i was watching a commercial the other day and it's like at least a base model 330i x drive for 560 dollars a month <laughs> I was like now. what yeah <laughs> why would Believe you it. do that <laughs> that's crazy some I'm people like, really you're, want you're it on one i'm not gonna do that Fuck that speaking of bmw did you see the uh the new m2 spy shots has the diagonally stacked exhaust tips like the lexus f models oh well, do they actually work because the Lexus yeah, is, is it going to be like it's going to be like two fake ones and a real one or I mean, exactly. it, the Lexus tips don't even they're like there's four inches of space between the actual exhaust outlets and the tips but the, the new M2 spy shots it's got almost like a super wing and it's got the trap not full trapezoid but like weird shape thing going on it, huh. it's a do less kind of hopefully it's just a decoy yeah i oh you know the only, gosh, i told myself i'd never sell that f80 but i i have been eyeing that m2 comp for a while and it Does, just looks uh, like an absolute blast yeah ross it. don't you have that coming soon i have an m4 comp m4 comp for is this the spy uh, shot April. that's the spy shot <laughs> that's it <laughs> There's, There's so much so going much on happening, man it's like <laughs> this is the m2 you're saying this is the new m2 what spy shot of the new m2 so not only at. is the exhaust diagonal it's they're center mounted like at least with yep. the lexus they had them out on the end so if you stand there while the car's running trying to load shit into the trunk you <laughs> it's gonna yourself. blast your shins <laughs> <laughs> um 
Oh. You know, hey, Mike, which... will you get my golf bag out of the trunk for me? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my leg bubbling? Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know. The F80s are cool. You know, the current ones are good. And the M2s have always been good. But this is like, stop drawing. Let the designers do less, you know. How do you guys feel about the station wagons? Because I've always been a huge RS6 Avant fan. Yeah. We're big wagon fans. With the yeah, V10, the of line. course. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying to my wife yesterday that like the ultimate daily driver would be like an E63 AMG S yeah. wagon. Yes. You know? I was going to ask you about that. Like if, if which one you would prefer. You know, prefer the rear wheel drive, but the, the S has the toggle mode. So you can just basically decouple the front diff. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. You know, and all wheel drive for when you need it, rear wheel drive for when you need it. It's the best of both worlds. That car is insanely overpriced, though, isn't it? It's, it's oh sitting God, at like 150, steep. 160 or something. It's, it's <laughs> yes. So I was, damn station wagon. <laughs> I always like the CLS wagon that we don't get, like the shooting brake that. Oh, I know. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we miss out on a lot of cool stuff. What is it? A M5. Uh, what, what's the, what do they call it? Not a state. Um, overseas, they call the M5 wagon. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. That thing is that thing is gnarly. I thought that didn't exist. It was like a museum piece. There's a, a touring, the M5 touring. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought there were, there were like a couple thousand of them. There was definitely an E60 generation model um and i know there's there's a new m3 wagon that there were spy photos of too that would be so, sweet yeah, so, yeah m5 I mean, touring let's see what comes it's up just that's just the dream so yeah we're big fans of wagons big fans of, of hatches so no, do you like the not, ttrs i feel like it looks better fuck yeah that. yeah yeah oh hell yeah the ttrs five cylinder duro it's not the like oh yeah 600 horsepower with an intake and downpipe and a tune and an exhaust like oh god damn yeah see that that's something i can get behind too yep i love a good wagon there was a oh i got i got a photo to share i was walking the the streets in colorado and i saw a wagon and i was like holy shit look at that and now of course my computer has gone dead like it's worked great all night on looking up stuff fast as possible but now because i said i have something to share is it an amc eagle it is not damn it is i i would venture the least likely not the least likely but like it as, as it goes you would not have picked this to be the car that i'm going to share dodge magnum <clears throat> oh damn always wanted to Oh yes, Volvo V60 Polestar. V60 Polestar, and it's legit Polestar. It was the badge on the front, yeah. Polestar badge, like the the big one or the little it's blue one, and then the big one wheel. Twenty five hundred bucks worth of brakes on it. Yep. Yes, it's a good looking. Uh, it's a good looking ride. Yep. Yeah, my I favorite. They're still underpowered though. They're still yeah. underpowered. But like they my were five cylinder like, turbos until they weren't. Yeah. Snow everywhere. Uh, not not Blizz X. <laughs> like park next to the Challenger. <laughs> that challenger screams v6 yeah it does yeah. <laughs> uh, i freaking love being in the mountain just seeing all the ridiculous stuff those v60 mountain. pole stars are are i mean i you know worked in a volvo dealership and those were always the highlight you know well because they're just you don't see them they sound very good i i do real fast i need to give someone a shout out i drove from kansas city to colorado and somebody sent me a picture of my license plate as I was driving on I-70. Is it your buddy Rick? No, it was my buddy John. And then literally John. on the way home, I'm in the, a different part of Kansas. Not the, that, like I saw him in Topeka the first time, a different part of Kansas. All of a sudden, uh, White Camry pulls up next to me, rolls down the window and starts talking to John again. I'm like, do you just live on the interstate? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Six days apart, <laughs> bud. Like what? Uh, it's anyway. so strange. Thanks for, thanks for entertaining me, John, on my nine hour trip. <laughs> <laughs> who's this asshole oh yeah <laughs> dude actually the first time the first time it happened he texted me the photo later and i didn't i didn't get it because i was driving and i was like what when did this happen he was like in topeka and i was like were you the a-hole that got up behind me really close that makes more sense now, now like, oh, yeah, i yeah. knew you <laughs> <laughs> amazing all right so uh so how's the rest of the season 
not the rest of the season, but how's the year looking? Uh, it's looking good. Nitro hasn't officially released their calendar, but I, I have seen what they've proposed and it looks awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, be probably a dead even split between domestic races and races overseas. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and with that, it's ex- we're going to start doing the FC1X electric car. That's right. Cool. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, and that car is going to be an absolute maniac. I actually fly to Bar- Barcelona um, in April to do our media day. And nice. Get a couple laps in the car. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll send you guys some videos so you can, you can take a look at it. Please do. Yeah, it's, so it should be fun. Is it is it going to be like a spec car that everybody just gets one and – essentially yeah it's essentially a spec car with uh with the rule book you know that allows you to you can change whatever you want uh to a certain point you can't really swap out electric or mechanical components right Uh, but the idea is this is going to entice more manufacturers into the series and the sport uh, because of their big electric push Mm -hmm. right and these cars use very similar technology to what manufacturers use themselves so there's a direct r d crossover between our cars yeah. and what they can provide to consumers you just get half the weight yeah half the weight and and awesome travel and, and uh carbon tubs and all kinds was, of stuff was that a real video that we just saw because if so it landed beautifully yeah it's yeah oh that this is this is in action right here all right um, that's really that's cool car. it was actually the bodywork was designed by an uh, engineer or a designer at mclaren i believe Sounds I mean, about that, right. That makes sense. And <laughs> yeah, it, in person, it's, it's a damn stunning car. It's, looking at like the comment on this video, Tanner comment that looks awesome, and he's driving the extremely electric uh, or McLaren. McLaren. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he probably knows the guy. Probably, probably. At least we, the name. Yeah, we need to have him back on the show. He didn't respond to the last email, so <laughs> well, I'll reach out to him. He's also busy. I'm pretty sure they're racing. Oh, yeah. That dude's got so much on his schedule right now. He's been doing all kinds of stuff. He's just flying his plane somewhere. Great guy, though. Yeah. I loved having him on. He was great. Mm -hmm. This thing looks awesome. (laughs) I'm sorry. I found in more videos. (laughs) Dude, that corner is so sharp. Like, this is going to be very interesting. So I think so. Yeah, you're you're gonna have you still have the supercar category, but then this will be just a separate category. Yeah, this will essentially be the premier class in nitro. Okay, and combustion will also combustion supercar will also be a class, mm-hmm. okay. not nearly as you know uh, sought after in in the eyes of um, the series and sponsors and whatnot. This is the premier class from from now on. Are they gonna run same day? Oh yeah, it'll be the same day. So you're gonna run? Are you running both? Uh, I've played with the idea, but obviously that's uh, damn near twice the budget. Right. Yeah. Budget. Why? Why don't? But budget twice exist. the seat time. You really yeah. get what you pay for in that sense. So it's tough to say. I think I, I personally think the electric is the way forward on manufacturer roles and and what uh, these guys see as a value. Mm-hmm. And, and drivers specifically so i still have to make my career doing awesome shit so i'd like to uh <laughs> i'd like to uh you know yeah. go where their their heads are at and, and be uh specialized in what they want to do so yeah <clears throat> but there's nothing like the the ice car it's just it'll always go down as an absolute legend of a machine yeah. yep do we need always to always have an m3 just bring polestar back in like come on guys you I know there's there's yeah. no reason Volvo can't get in, in behind it. And again, yeah. the idea is to have a spec car, so to speak, for mm-hmm. a couple of years. And as manufacturers come in, uh, then eventually you can open up the rule book to allowing manufacturers to m- implement their own actual um, products into the car. And then you then you have like a true open class, uh, almost old school Formula One style, you know. Yeah. Go and R and D and make things as badass as you possibly can. Yep. Yeah. Free for all. Once again. Yeah. That's awesome. No, it'll be well, great. It'll we be are great. looking forward to watching. Tell yeah, I hope so. Man. Y'all should y'all should try and make a race. Yeah. Uh, Once we see a calendar. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Stay tuned. I think it's the next uh, five to ten days. So firm is Florida, right? Yeah. Firm's Florida. Where's Glen Helen? Was that Arizona? 
Glen Helen uh, oh, is in Southern California, California, San Bernardino County. Okay. And that will no longer be on the schedule, I, I don't think. <laughs> that stinks. Interesting. Yeah. Where too bad. Oh, ERX is in Minneapolis. That's not too far. ERX, it's, yeah. It's like seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people drive far. Seven hours from an airport. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have their own airport. Actually, they're, they have a great airport. Uh, Minneapolis is not that bad an airport. Uh, I'd like to get a race out there in, in like Massachusetts, man. That'd be awesome. Let's fucking do it. Yeah, I got a I got a bunch of uh, family out there still, so I was like, that'd be awesome. We could. Uh, I mean, I say we. I mean, you and. But you just cover Lime Rock with dirt. Oh my god! Oh, I'm ready, man. The downhill, <laughs> a jump down the downhill at Lime Rock. There's oh, no reason you can't god. do it. That it would be tough for spectators, you know. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, Lime Rock's pretty small. Fair. Yeah, it is. It is very small. But uh, I was just also, it's the only would, track I knew of that might, other than like Bristol, because I put dirt on that already for NASCAR. Mm-hmm. But that's not rally yeah, style. Uh, the Glen, Watkins Glen. Yeah, Glen. That's huge. You know, I, I actually did a couple of uh, corporate days for Toyota releasing their CHR, which was a magnificent vehicle. <laughs> and uh, we did That's it a word in, for it. We did it in uh, Monticello. Okay. Yeah. Which was, is an awesome facility. So it cool. Is. And they have an off-road course. In the, yeah. In the and they have, oh, they have some amazing too. shit just stored away well, in their garages, dude. Yeah. Absolutely really. love uh monticello is doing the uh the private like golf club type thing now where like you can yeah. basically buy a hanger like a storage thing and store your shit there is that and, uh, is that chris uh duplessy is he at monticello something like that i think he is yeah i think he's like a co something he was years ago he was gonna bring he he had a rally car and I was still teaching middle school at the time. And he was like, yeah, when I bring it back through the Midwest, we'll just stop and we'll let your kids pour over it. And it never happened. But like, I, I love that he offered. <laughs> it was great. Well, they have like a rally stage type thing at Monticello. Yeah, I think it's, I think that's definitely Chris Plessy there. Yeah. There's I don't think there's any reason. I mean, you got to talk to the owner, right? It is a private facility and it's so beautifully maintained too. Mm-hmm. But uh, <clears throat> there's plenty of space to host a nitro event there i just don't cuts. know if it would be an eyesore or not you know oh uh, if they if just they, like, massive mountains of dirt yeah you know? not used to that that's like the most beautifully <laughs> it looks like a damn golf course you know yeah, it does. that's they're going for golf course vibe yeah it looks a lot Which like they're doing golf. a good job of it you know what yeah, about a uh, rally rally rattle blah, 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 blah rally ready down in austin texas i bet dave i love uh, i love texas dave i bet david shoved some dirt Dude, around dave i watched would, that video 100 be okay with doing that. <laughs> that that video that came out this week is i watched it again today it is the most ridiculous thing and it is perfect like that is dave in a video it's dave. Yeah, yeah that guy's a riot he is a legend like, he actually he actually uh taught me how to drive on the dirt really oh yeah yeah <laughs> So I went out to him and I was like, obviously growing up on a ranch, I was like, this is heaven, you know, exactly. you have a rally ranch, you know, what the hell? Yeah. Yep. I've been back a couple of times since, but I'd, I'd love to go back uh, and see it. Every time I go, there's something wildly different and, and upgraded, you know, yeah. he's yep. got a crazy work ethic. Just love that his skid loader has AC. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he loves Freaking that. Texas, yeah, he I mean, shit. That's his favorite thing to be in, I think. <laughs> I remember seeing him. He used to use like that old school grader out there when I when I was visiting him. I mean, when I when I first went there, like it was, it was damn near just the farmhouse and uh, and a couple of things cut out, like a figure eight. You know, it was like fresh, bare bones. I think he'd been there a year, maybe. Man, yeah, come a long way. I mean, we're coming up on two years since we had him on the show. He's you know? busy. I, I we text. I text every couple of three months with gotta... him give him a call because i'm going i'm going to be in that area like 20 miles from there in april so he sends me dumb photos all the time and i was just like what do you want to say just come on the show i know i I miss you Uh, it always comes back to dave that's the theme of this show he he is kind of connected to a lot of people he fucking knows that he is dude he's really good at doing that yeah Yeah. so sweet kevin is there anything you want to plug 
Uh, well, uh, I do have a couple sponsors. I got a list. I, yeah. I don't want to do a NASCAR <laughs> list for you, but uh, recently I've had uh, some really good help from Diode Dynamics and, and Molecule. Diode Dynamics, obviously, doing some lights. Um, Just bought some been, of their lights. Yeah, they've been sure. helping me with my Forerunner build and whatnot. Hell yeah. Uh, Molecule has always been my go to like helmet and, and suit cleaner. And they their detergent smells amazing, unlike <laughs> my sweat rag, you know. So it's they're a great oh, company. They supported me for a long time. Uh, yeah, Butcher Box was our sponsor uh, last year, and we hope to have them back. But they they do that meat deliveries uh, subscription. Yep. They, yep. You know, um, they send me bacon all the time, which is rad. They really do have the meats. <laughs> yeah, they really do, man. They really That's do. Arby's tagline, Ross. No, we were playing. <laughs> we're repurposing it okay also a boston-based company too so it's like that's good i can get behind that no idea yeah yeah and um there's there's plenty more the the berry is a company that we've been working with in nitro and they they did a lot of our social media stuff they do like augmented reality and really trippy videos and two two guys out of the uk and they're they're just a, a blast to be around so they're doing stuff pretty much exclusively for nitro uh but they've done some of our things in the past, but they're, they're fun time. Good guys. Solid. Yeah. And Stilo, Stilo and impact <laughs> guys. Keep me safe. Safe is good. Safe, safe is, is good. good. Yep. Well, sweet. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, you can rate and review this show on uh, Apple podcasts or anywhere you listen to your podcast. We'll take a review anywhere. Uh, you can like, and subscribe on YouTube. This might be an episode where it's better to watch than listen just to kind of gauge how high the cars are in the air. Or Spotify <laughs> and do both. Or yeah, or do yeah, Spotify and you can do both. Uh, Cabot is at follow the ham. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and then Hooniverse is the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad. And I'm still using Ross's note sheet from the week before where he flipped these things because normally I say, check out all the writing first, but now I'm doing oh, all these. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <fine>. I <laughs> will make sure to update the next one. You can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, Everyday Driver, and then US News and World Report. One of those things is not like the other. It, one of them one doesn't of end in yes. er. <laughs> <laughs> US News and World Report. Her. Her. <laughs> Her. just you just get more reporting do that i'll just i'll let the the east coast vibe out because i've met a number of east coast people that when things aren't supposed to end in er they put er on the don't end fucking get me started <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet thank you kevin oh thank you guys for having me it's been great thanks for joining man a lot of, of course, fun anytime.